<laughs> hey guys, this is David Fine from Watch Your Lip. This is our Beach Fishing Fast Fish How-To Series where we're gonna teach you how to be a successful beach fisherman. So guys, today we are going to talk about using sabiki rigs on the beach to catch bait. Guys, let's talk about sabiki, shall we? So here's the deal, guys. You can't catch fish if you don't have bait. And some guys just don't do the cast net thing. And you know, I know people that have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried to learn how to throw a cast net and they just can't get it. And you know what? Um, nobody's perfect. So uh, guys, if that's you, don't feel bad because there's an invention called the Sabiki rig. And there's this thing that you can go to any tackle shop and they range in cost between two and $5. Uh, but I'm going to tell you right now, get, spend a little bit more money and get the fluorocarbon sabiki rigs. I would use a number four. And if you go and look for a fluorocarbon number four sabiki rigs, um, it's, it's a little pack of six, uh, quills, six little hooks. And I like the smaller hooks. Those are number fours. And what they do is they mimic little tiny baby shrimps or planktons and the, uh, pilchards, goggle eyes. Um, all kinds of fish, little jacks, blue runners, they go nuts and they eat the sabikis and then you can catch all the bait you want. If you don't see bait schools, then you can just blind cast the sabiki rigs and a lot of times you can catch little dork jacks or little baby blue runners and those make great bait as well. But most of the time, if you're on the beaches in South Florida between April and September, there's gonna be pilchards on the beach, there's gonna be cigar minnows, there's gonna be smelt, there's gonna be um, herring, threadfin herring, goggle eye, something. And if you throw, you're gonna wind up finding some bait fish. So have a bubbler with a bucket ready and a D hooker. So when you get them in, you can quickly undo the uh, hooks from the bait and shake the bait off into your bucket without ha actually having to handle them. Those are, it's a great tool to have on board. And you go with a light line spinning rod. You want to. You don't want to use too heavy of a spinning rod because uh, you need to be able to cast it out far. So you want to have a fairly light line. I would go 10, 12, 15 pound test, no more than that. Maybe maybe 20 pound braid, uh, you can get it out there. Uh, because the Sabiki rig line, the actual line of the rig is very, very tiny. So you're gonna use a smaller weight. You're gonna use anywhere from an eighth of an ounce, maybe up to an ounce, maybe two ounces. I wouldn't go any further than that because if you go heavier than two ounces and you cast, your sabiki rig is gonna break and that's gonna be very upsetting because they get expensive. All right, so I would go a half ounce weight, get, those, get the lead weights with the little wire ring on the top that you can easily clip it onto. If you look at your sabiki rig, um, at, from the store and you open the back of it, there's two swivels. There's one that's a swivel and there's another one that's a snap swivel. Well, the snap swivel is what you snap onto your weight. So what you do is before taking the hooks out of the package, don't make a mess, the hooks are in the package, snap your, your weight onto your snap swivel and then tie your line from your fishing reel onto the other swivel and then what you do is you, you, you hold the, the sabiki rig in your hand and you, you, you grab the weight and you slowly pull the weight out and one by one the hooks will unravel from the package and they'll slide right out. Now, you can't put the rig back in the package. So what do you do to store a sabiki rig when you're done? Different guys do different things. I use a pool noodle. You go to a dollar store and get a pool noodle and you can cut it in like six different chunks of pieces like this, and you literally can wrap your sabiki rig around the pool noodle and put the hooks inside of the foam, and that way nobody gets hooked. That's one way to go about it. Some guys use a uh, sabiki rod. They actually make a, a fishing rod that's specifically designed for sabiki rig. So this is a, um, a bait caster version. You can get a spinning rod version, but as you can see, the line goes inside of the rod, inside of this little hole, and the line is actually inside of this hollow rod. And why is that? It's because the, the sabiki rig 
actually fits. Let me see if I can do this without ruining stuff. The, the Sabiki rig actually fits inside of here and the weight winds up right there when you reel it up and the hooks are all inside of this rig and it's actually stores very nice. This Sabiki rig is over a year old. I've actually had it on this rod for over a year now. Um, that's pretty impressive and it, it saves it really nice, but it's another tool that you have. It's another thing to bring to the beach. Um, you can use it if you want. You see how the weight um, see how the weight of the Sabiki rig just reels right up into here and nobody gets hooked. I don't get Sabiki hooks in my clothing and um, my wife is happy because I'm not ruining my clothing. <laughs> so that's one way you can go about it. You can use your pool noodle. People find all kinds of interesting ways to store their Sabikis, uh, but um, you're going to wind up spending money if you don't figure something out. So come with some kind of system on when you're done with it, what do you do with your sabiki rig? Wrap it up real quick, get rid of it, and put it away, put it in your tackle box and be done with it. Also, you gotta make sure you, you wash the hooks off because the little gold hooks, they rust out really, really quick if you don't rinse them off. Uh, if you maintain them, they can last, but typically sabiki rigs don't last that long because they're, the line is really light, and as the fish start to pull on them, you know, a blue runner will come and take them and they'll pull a rig off or a hook off and pretty soon you're left with two or three hooks. And so they typically don't last too long, but it's a shame to have a, a $5 Sabiki rig and not be able to reuse it again. So make sure you have something to, uh, to store them with. So what you can do is you can blind cast them. You can just send them out and reel them in, kind of jerk them, you know, jig them a little bit and you'll find little fishes. But what you really want to do is you want to look for a pilchard school and those, those menhaden, those pilchards, the uh, threadfin herring, if you see them coming up and they're all in shore and they, you, you see that little cloud that kind of moves around, you basically you just cast in the middle of that and they, they think it's little baby shrimp and you'll have a whole stringer full of pilchards in one cast and you can just fill up your bucket that way. If, if there's nothing around, you're not seeing any pilchard schools, you're not seeing any bait schools, what you can do is you can bring a package of frozen shrimp and you can actually cut little tiny pieces of shrimp or squid and tip the little hooks with shrimp, throw them out and you can catch sand perch, you can catch dork jacks, little blue runners and things like that. And that's another way you can use uh, the sabiki rig. Some people when they're storing their sabiki rig, they actually will just take um, the hooks and they'll they'll link up hooks number one and two they'll link up hooks number three and four and they'll link up hooks number five and six and then they'll wrap the their uh, their line around the reel handle and that way the hooks are all occupied and so they, they keeps them from hooking people that's another way you can store a sabiki rig guys we love sabiki rigs absolutely love them they are a little bit of a mess they're a little annoying sometimes when you're trying to store them, but man, do they catch bait. So it's a great way to catch bait, guys. I hope you learned something in this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget, subscribe to this channel because we got tons more how-to videos coming your way because we want to help you be successful. We want to help you catch big fish, and we've got plenty of big fish episodes on our Watch Your Lip channel, so we hope you'll subscribe and watch some of our beach fishing episodes where we catch big snook and tarpon and jacks and sharks and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, guys, comment down below if you won't have anything that you wanna see us focus on on a how-to video. Uh, but guys, until next time, uh, God bless, take care, stay, stay safe. Um, let's get out there and rip some lips. Take care, watch your lip.